The Honorable Member for Wellington Halton Hills. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, like many of my colleagues in the House, we've spent countless hours in this place over the years. We've spent countless years debating and arguing and trying to convince our colleagues of our positions on various issues. And like my colleagues in the House, I've participated in numerous, numerous debates, sat for dozens and, frankly, hundreds of hours on parliamentary committees, and sat late into the evening like we will once again tonight on debate. I've run in five general elections, standing up for the principles and ideals that I believe in and for my constituents in Wellington County and in Halton Hills. And I say all this, Mr. Speaker, because this House of Commons is really like a second home to all of us because of the amount of time we spent here. And my colleagues are like family. And like all families, we have our agreements and our disagreements, and we have our ups and our downs. And like family, we are honest with each other. And Mr. Speaker, if we are honest, we will acknowledge that we have a problem in Canada's Parliament. The Senate scandals and last year's controversy in the House about whether or not MPs had the right to stand and speak make it clear that decades of changes to Parliament and our electoral laws have weakened the role of elected legislators and centralized that power in party leaders. It's clear that Parliament needs to be reformed. Barrels of ink have been spent documenting this problem throughout the decades. Countless books, academic papers, columns, journals have been written. The problems in Parliament today are not the result of any one party or any one leader. They're not the result of any one set of actors. They're a result of changes that have happened through successive parliaments, through governments and leaders of different stripes, of different parties. And the party leaders themselves, Mr. Speaker, have acknowledged this problem. Party leaders from John Turner to Preston Manning, from Paul Martin to current party leaders, have called for measures to address this quote-unquote democratic deficit. And despite all the barrels of ink, despite all the platform commitments, all the attempts to change, little, if anything, has happened. In fact, arguably, the problem is worse today than it ever has been. And so today, and this month, and this year, the time has come to act. And for act we must, because it's clear that Canadians are becoming increasingly disillusioned with their parliament and their democracy. Now, Parliamentary reform, Mr. Speaker, includes both the House of Commons and the Senate. But before we reform the Senate, we must reform the House of Commons. And the reason for that, Mr. Speaker, is very simple. In our Parliament, there is only one place where the people have a democratically elected voice, where the people are democratically elected on the basis of population, and where people have an appeal to the powers that govern this country, and that is the House of Commons and not the Senate of Canada. And furthermore, Mr. Speaker, it's clear with the recent Supreme Court of Canada ruling that Senate reform, whether it's in the form of abolition or whether it's in the form of term limits and direct elections of senators, will require a constitutional amendment and the consent of provincial governments and provincial legislatures. And so, Mr. Speaker, the bill in front of us today addresses what I believe to be the more important chamber in this Parliament, and not only that, is achievable through a simple piece of legislation. Now, Mr. Speaker, I've spent a quarter of my life in this institution, and I believe there are three reasons for the problems we face today. First, party leaders approve party candidates. In fact, to my knowledge, Canada is the only Western democracy where, by law, party leaders have the power to approve party candidates in an election. To my knowledge, no other, West, no other Western democracy has given party leaders this enormous power over their party candidates. And second, the unwritten conventions that have governed parliamentary party caucuses have changed over the decades. And they have changed and evolved in a way that has advantaged the caucus leadership and disadvantaged caucus members. And third, Mr. Speaker, I believe the role of the caucus in reviewing the leader has been little used and the rules opaque. And this has weakened the accountability of party leaders to their respective caucuses in a system 
of parliamentary democracy where caucuses once elected the party leader. And as a result, I think, Mr. Speaker, Canadians are losing confidence in the ability of their elected MPs to represent them in Ottawa and increasingly feel that MPs represent Ottawa to them. Voter turnout has declined. 